pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And, uh, like, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, could we seal the minutes of the non public session? Yes. Would we have a motion to? Uh, seal the minutes of the uh, non-public just held pursuant to RSA 91-A, semicolon uh, colon 3, 2D. Seconded. Please call the roll. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Cast. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Okay, I don't think we're going to have any takers, but uh, would like to open a public forum at this time. And seeing no one, I would close the public forum at 7.01. And um, now I would like to uh, have a motion to approve the uh, non-public meeting minutes of May 3rd, 2017. So moved. Second. Uh, so did anybody have any needed changes? If so, we would need to... Uh, not approve at this time. Right, you have to go to non-public. We'd have to go to non-public at another time if there's any changes in the minute minutes. Uh, call roll. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Cast. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Okay, could I have a motion to approve the uh, regular meeting minutes for May 3rd? So moved. Second. Call roll. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Cast. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Okay. Uh, I think it's a uh, report of the town administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the first item on my report is I've reviewed our expenditures and revenues for the current fiscal year. And at this point in time, we have no issues. With 83% of the year completed, we've expended 8% of our, our operating budget, which is exactly where we were last year. In addition, we have expended 8% of the general fund, and at this point in time last year, we actually were higher than that, 81%. The only significant area of concern is public works, which is 89% expended. This is due mainly to overtime because of snow we received in March. We had that rather large snowstorm. Our revenues are slightly below where we were uh, now last year. Last year, we collected 100% of our anticipated revenues at 23.4 million. We adjusted our anticipated revenues in the budget process this year uh, and anticipated uh, 24.2 million, and currently we're at 23.8 million. Uh, the one area that we're looking at that seems to be below is ambulance revenues, about 50,000 below this where we were last year. Uh, other than that, we're seeing a slight decline in motor vehicle registrations. The reasoning is that for the last few years, everybody was buying new cars. And when the economy got better, now they're just renewing the new cars. And when that happens, the value goes down, so some of the revenues go down. Uh, we're just uh, not seeing as many new cars being purchased because we're still in a good economy. It's just they jumped right when it got better. Uh, if there's any issues, we do have an opportunity in October to revise our revenue estimates. Uh, but we should be OK. Uh, come tax rate setting time. At this point in time, I'm going to go a little bit off my report since I did mention taxes. Uh, the town clerk tax collector is going to be sending out the tax bills uh, tomorrow. They will be due on July 6th for the, uh, the this half year's billing. I want everybody to realize that this bill does not include the bond that was passed in March. We're still taxing for the la this current fiscal year. Uh, so you will not see the impact of that. And a lot of people have been asking, and those who have actually, we, we've actually already emailed notice of, of the tax bills out, and those people were like, oh, there wasn't a big impact. It's not in there. So you'll see that in the second uh, tax bill of the year. Just an update on the downtown project. We met with a contractor and our project engineer on May 4th to review the project, and we walked the entire site. We found a number of items that need to be addressed, and it's uh, target construction intent to do so quickly. However, the New Hampshire DOT is now delaying the project to make sure that previous contractors are paid, and from our understanding, they have been. What the process is is that we receive the payment from the state for their portion of the grant. We forward that onto the construction company. They disperse all funds. 
we don't, any contracts with the with subcontractors aren't with the town, they're with Target Construction. So that's uh, just to give an update where we are there. Hopefully they can get out there as soon as possible. Uh, just a couple. Could yeah. I ask a question about that? Can you comment on the uh, on some of the crosswalks where the uh, the, one, the one in I guess in front of the big beam where it's really low? They they put asphalt in there. The state came in and filled that with asphalt with coal patch until such time as it could be fixed. What we saw was during the rain incident this weekend, it uh, moved the pavers a lot more. Uh, and my understanding is they came in Monday morning and just patched it. Yep. I said, you know what? If it makes it safe for now, let's do it. And they try to rip it out and fix it when, when they can get permission to do so. That's right. Okay. Uh, a couple of items that are not on my written report. First, they received a communication from a member of the Veterans Committee. And they just wanted people to remember that Memorial Day Parade is on May 30th at 6 p.m. Uh, it starts, uh, goes downtown, comes up Beach Street Extension, no, Packers Falls Road then to the Riverside Cemetery where there will be a ceremony that evening. If there's a rain uh, event that day, that will be postponed the 31st, and after that, there will be the, the event will be canceled. Uh, there's also gonna be a, a Veterans Memorial Golf Tournament on June 3rd at uh, Rockingham Country Club. All money, they still need some teams, and the money that is raised for that is going towards the uh, Veterans Memorial that they plan on installing near the library. So if you have any interest in, uh, interest in enjoying that, you information's on the town website we did uh, receive paving bids uh, between the my writing of this report and to this meeting we received a bid uh, from Bell and Flynn and that's the, the bad news is we only received one the good news is it was significantly less than we anticipated so we're asking the contractor to uh, increase the paving that they were going to be doing on new road so we can get more of it done this year uh, so I, exactly. by the next meeting, we'll have a, a, a proposal to uh, pave New Road further than mm -hmm. we were anticipating, as well as Beach Street Extension. So I just want to give the council uh, that information. Uh, in addition, the superintendent of schools and I have discussed setting up that joint meeting between the school board and the council for late this summer. And we're looking at a date of August 30th, just so everybody can try to pencil that in. And the superintendent's going to bring it to the school board tomorrow evening. And that's all I have tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, now, so the next thing on the agenda is to... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Council Thompson. I think we do. Um, the overtime because of the snow, I know that um, the director revised how overtime is paid a few years ago, a different schedule, so it's more like it's over 40 and not over eight. That was just a one-time thing, though. I mean, it has overtime been a pro It has not been a problem all winter. No. It was just because of that No, storm. we've had a pretty warm winter, but we had a significant snow that... Right. Oh, and salt was a significant, because thank you, Public Works directors here. Um, because we didn't get a lot of snow and we had a lot of other events with rain and freezing, salt was higher as well, so it wasn't just overtime. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. And uh, the next thing on the agenda is the water and sewer asset management yep. plan. Have Sean. Yes. Um, the uh, Tower New Market received a grant from uh, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, $15,000 matching grant, so where we call it, we spend up to $15,000. We get reimbursed $15,000. Today I have um, Margaret Blank from um, Underwood engineers to do the presentation. Uh, we worked with Underwood on this piece. The um, main purpose of this is so that we look at our aging infrastructure and come up with a plan, inventory everything, and not replace it just because it needs to be replaced, but to give it a rating and figure out what's the most critical pieces of our infrastructure and, and to come up and replace things as they're needed to be replaced. So I'll have Margaret come up for the presentation. Actually, Margaret, you're gonna have to be over there because oh, it's on here? TV and on mic. So, oh, gotcha. um, that's not the clickers. That right way. next. Yep. To you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, like Sean said, I, my name is Margaret Blank. I'm with Underwood Engineers, and uh, we prepared an asset management plan for you. Um, it was a 
$30,000 effort, $15,000 came from the Department of Environmental Services. And another fifteen, dollars uh, and the, uh, the 15000 match came from the town. So, like Sean explained, asset management is basically a decision-making tool. It helps you um, how to manage your assets and when to replace and, you know, when to maybe let something ride. The components are level of service, the asset inventory, identifying your critical assets, life cycle costing, how much will an asset cost over its lifetime, and coming up with a long-term funding strategy. Um, level of service, I think of it as meeting your customers' needs and expectations. And throughout this process, we worked with your staff to come up with a level of service. And of course, regulatory compliance is going to be a major goal. Um, secondary standards, color, um, availability, you wanna service as many customers as possible. Uh, meet fire flow requirements where, where it's feasible. Uh, you want to make sure that your supply keeps up with demand. Um, and you want to keep, uh, you know, a certain amount of pressure on the system. 60 to 80 PSI is preferred, minimum 20 PSI. Uh, reliability, you want to minimize unplanned shutdowns and breaks. And you want to provide as much notice as possible before a planned outage. Uh, you, your town, New Market, has three supply wells, the blending facility, the booster pump station, the storage tank, and over 132,000 feet of water main. The value of your water main is probably 98% of the cost of your system. Um, we, for the purposes of the report, we place the criticality of an asset based on those that might have the most impact on your customers. Your uh, wells and your blending facility are gonna have a system-wide impact. Um, the booster pump station and the storage tank, that would also impact a large number of customers. And then water mains, you know, it depends. What's the diameter? Who is it serving? Is it a trunk line? Is it a small branch? Um, but I thought you might be interested in knowing you have 23,000 feet of water main out there that was installed in 1895. So there are some old pipes out there. Um, oh, and another group of veins that might be considered critical are those that are undersized. As part of this effort, Underwood modeled the water system as well and um, did identify some mains that probably should be upsized. Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah. Where is the majority of the 1895 water lines? Um, there is a park running down Elm Street, um, down uh, South Main Street. Um, there's some on uh, Bay Road. Uh, there's some down 108 by the golf course. But the bulk of it, I want to say, is around Spring Street. Um, they are in those areas. Yeah. All right. Life cycle cost. Um, how much will it cost to maintain the system? Uh, DES asked that we cost this out over 100 years, and we found that replacement costs for the water system over 100 years would be. Uh, $43 million, or approximately $432,000 a year. And the need over the next 10 years is approximately $4 million. Can I ask you, when you say that it's, it's $43 million over 100 years, is there, is that in today's dollars? I did it all in today's dollars just because when you're costing things out that far, there's a lot of uncertainty. So then when you add, you know, 
and factor on top of that. Sometimes it can I mean, that makes it. sense to me because if it costs twice as much in 50 years, you know, then that will be reflected. It will be, everything will reflect out there. Right. And your planning horizon is, I mean, most towns do like a five year capital plan or a 10 year capital plan. So your actual planning horizon is a lot shorter and things change as you go along. So. All right, and then at the end of the day, you have to figure out how to pay for all this. Um, and of course, some sources of funding are revenues from water user charges, system development fees. Um, you can build capital reserves by, by, by building them in, um, or you can set aside surpluses, secure loans, or hopefully secure grants. planned on doing a demonstration, but <laughs> technical difficulties. So I'll just go ahead and take some more questions if you have any. So I guess, I guess my question that I'm seeing with some of your charts is that for the next 20 years, it looks like the big focus is going to be replacing water mains, and there's kind of a gap, and then it kind of spikes again. Um, is that the 1895 lines that need to be replaced in the next 20 years? It is. It is. And there are some lines from the 1940s as well that um, it would be better for the system if they were sized a little bit bigger. Councilor Thompson. Lately we've had wells, new wells, old wells, whatever. Um, I know that Public Works and we've had rate increases to the users that our director has attempted to keep as, as level as possible um, and planning all of this out and building in now to kind of pay ahead um, so that there aren't big spikes when things happen. Is this included all in, in this, Sean? This I mean, had you figured that some of this was coming and that's it already in part of what are, the rates already are? Well, the rates are going to need to increase uh, to fit this, a lot of this in. We are doing a very good job of setting a large chunk of money aside, but our plan in the uh, water and sewer department and the water department to say is that we just did some major projects. It was time for us to take a step back and have a look and then decide what our next goal is and where we're going to go. So that's what this is. And we are also doing the build out study too. So once we get all that information in, we that's our next job is to plan out our next so many years. Um, but it's, we're going to have to look at rates and figure out you know, what we should do and what the best plan of action is. You can't do it all at once. And I think the most important thing on the water mains is you don't want to replace them all at the same time because next time you've got to replace them all at the same time again. So you want to try and spread them out so that you elongate them so that when it comes time to replace them, you're replacing so much of water main every 10 years. And that will also, I would assume, it will require taking um, service down for people. I mean, while you're replacing a main, mm -hmm. you've got to have another way for people to have water. We'll have so there's all that that sequencing yes. and all of that that needs to get done. But I mean, I think okay. this is really shaping up to show exactly where our next steps are going to be. And so it's really a good planning tool for us. I agree. And and establishing what should get done and why it should get done. Council Bowden. Uh, it says the minimum on, under normal working pressure for dis distribution system is 35 pounds. Optimal is 60 to 80 pounds. Minimum under for all is 20. Where are we today? Today, the majority as far as of our system is up around the 80 pounds, the majority of okay. um, There are specific rules that you have to maintain a certain amount of pressure unless you're in an emergency situation. Okay. I, I noticed in there that the, uh, it said the water treatment plant is, is are, are you closer to having, to, to selling the water treatment plant? We are closer 
um, to doing something with the water treatment plant. We're waiting for the wastewater treatment plant to get done. There is money in CIP to pull all the um, surveillance and all the water operation stuff out of there to the wastewater plant. So we centralize it and streamline everything. Okay. So that's all in the CIP to do that. And we can't do anything until the wastewater treatment plant is done. Okay. Um, it, it's keep in mind that the reason this is a draft right now, there are going to be changes to this draft, and when it's done, it'll be put on the website. Um, the majority of it's done, but there's still, as you can see, I made a bunch of comments for uh, yeah. way to, to address. Um, and it's important to know that the reason, another reason we're having this meeting is because we are, we must do it as part of the grant to educate people on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's the from this is a requirement tonight. Well, and, it, and, and the reason for that is to educate the public. You mentioned rates. I mean, $43 million is, has to be paid for somehow. So, and people just kind of need to understand this is coming gradually. Yeah. Well, and my other point is that I appreciate the forward planning. We've done a lot of work in the last few years to look ahead. I, mm -hmm. I think, Sean, you have done a great job as far as um, planning and looking and trying to balance all the factors and not taking on too much and so my point was to a say thank you for that and also hopefully that those listening or reading will understand that we are paying attention to that I think you do pay attention to that so that there's not a spike and I'd like people to not panic and go oh my god the rates are going up again we don't know that um, and I think we should have some confidence that while we will ask you tough questions um, that they understand we do have some confidence in you trying to balance everything that the town has got going on. Yeah. And it's important to know Margaret's done a few of these and she says we Margaret say hey. <laughs> <laughs> I you jumped in. I was and gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> that it, says a lot true. for your department. Do we have any wood pipes? We don't have any wood pipes down. There See, we're at. Wood pipes. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. And this document has Tom. exactly what all our pipes <laughs> is and what all yep. what all the links mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Which is really good. We have it in GIS, and we're moving towards a GIS system to maintain the system, which will track everything. Loved all the for maps and colors and the mm. yeah, just so. phenomenal. Thank the you. maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's I was wish. overlays and where everything is and whatever. I thought oh, yeah. that was a very, okay. very helpful. Yeah. If um, on the lights. The demonstration I I would have shown you the the maps came out of GIS, and there is an attribute table associated with all the pipes, all the hydrants, all the valves, and your staff really was ahead of the curve. I came in, they had all these shape files already. Um, they handed me the information for the wells and the booster pump station and just really well prepared. But um, yeah, Arc, Arc Map is a great tool. And these guys are already on it and already using it. So, Councilor Bowden has a Question, comment? Yeah, it's a quick question in regards to looking at the, and apologize if you already addressed it, but does this take into consideration the cost of uh, the DPW and what they're going to have to do with the road work? Pavement? Or do the cost reflect? Oh, the road oh. work has to go. It, Correct. It does. Or is it going to go in conjunction with it, it, when this road needs to be repaved or, or the redone? $50 a linear foot goes into what it costs to replace the water pipe and put the road back together. Okay. So, but the, the big thing about what we're looking to do next is to get to the sewer side and start looking at that and then overlapping the sewer, the water, and looking at drainage and looking at road paving so we can maybe put all the projects together so we go into one area once and everybody shares the cost. Thank uh, you. That's the eventual goal. Thank you. <laughs> Council Finch. Uh, really, yeah, just my comments uh, was, was how well this, this draft is very user-friendly and, and to see the foresight for the next 100 years I think was helpful too. So I think that obviously cost and that stuff factors in, but to see that there is a well balanced plan for 100 years is, is certainly reassuring that there's that mm -hmm. much foresight. So um, thank you for producing this, I guess. So the, the oh, sorry, Council Cast. Oh. Um, besides the GIS, or maybe the GIS system covers it, I'm not real familiar with that kind of system. Um, 
are there other tools that can help to pour all of these variables into the pot to help with decision making? There are. I actually made a spreadsheet and it pulls the pipe inventory from the GIS. I could actually show you that. I have it on my thumb drive if that's all right. Yeah. While you're pulling up, the question I was going to ask, just, just to comment, Sean, on, uh, so you've got the, the uh, uh, study coming in showing, sort of addressing how much capacity we have. That's yes. the other study that's coming along. Yes, it's, uh, right now it's, I'm anticipating I'm getting it next week. I met with uh, Wright Pierce last week and uh, went over some additional information they needed, and they assured me that it would be probably next week that I'd see the draft. Yeah, and, and, I, and I was going to mention it in the committee reports, but I'll mention it now, and it sort of dovetails with this. Is, and I think you've been a part of it, too, the technical committee on that groundwater modeling that the uh, postdoc from, uh, uh, from UNH is doing. On, on I received some stuff about it. Yeah, and, and, and Diane's been there. The, yeah. Our plant, town planner, has been there. And you, one of the things that you see on that is, you know, um, even really with a, a, apart from rising sea levels, but see, rising sea levels could make it worse. There could be parts of our community not on community water now that could, you know, really need yeah. us to be there, need us to take them on, so to speak, or at least consider that. So, so that you, have to, you have a lot of contingency to work through in your plan. That was my only point from that. Yeah. And the problem is, is that everything is, wasn't put in yesterday. It was all put in. That's why I was wondering if the tool would help you to adjust the plan as we go, you know, so as contingencies change or, or come into focus. That's where we, we basically say how important a piece is. Uh -huh. So everything gets uh, a numbering system. So you, what rises to the top is your most critical pieces. Okay. I say that right now. Yes, you sure did. <laughs> <laughs> trying to. All right, let me. I know I need to be over at the mic, but yes, this spreadsheet um, is the one that schedules out the costs for the wells and the pump stations. Um, you can see there's a column that says impact of failure and probability of failure. And uh, a column next to it so that says criticality. But if you look at the report, there's that matrix, that criticality matrix. And as, as um, the town is upgrading these facilities, the probability of failure is going to go down. Or say you bring another well online, um, the impact of one given well might go down. So these things will change over time. And if you change those numbers, um, it'll carry through to the whole spreadsheet. So it'll adjust all of the ratings and rankings of all each component? Right, and it'll, um, you know, change the schedule, everything. It'll change, there's, um, there's a summary table over here. Let me just show you this first. Oops. <laughs> all right, so this was scheduling things out for the first 10 years and then this next section is scheduled out for the 10 next 10 decades 100 years um, and then there are some summary tables over here they're not very pretty the pretty ones are located in this tab at the end Oh, but let me show you the pipe inventory first. This information came directly out of the map. And there's, you'll see there's an impact and probability uh, for each of the pipes as well. So you can change that as you uh, replace pipes as you go along. Or, you know, maybe you, maybe you put in a redundant loop. So one pipe that would, had a large impact no longer has that big impact. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of factors, and that goes back to um, the chairman's question earlier, is, you know, there, there are so many moving parts, things are going to change every five, ten years. Yes, can you do, you, I would guess you might be able to use it for what if, 
analysis as well. Exactly, okay. run scenarios. All right. No other questions or comments at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, um, Luis wow. from the Department of Environmental Services that gave us the grant, which is like you said. Yeah, please. If you don't mind. No, sorry. not at all. I don't want to take too much of your time, but what I wanted to say is kind of echo what you guys have said already. Sean and the, uh, his staff has done a great job uh, putting this tool together. And one thing that I want to add to what Underwood and Sean have already mentioned is that it is a tool that was, it's definitely going to help them uh, going into the future. Um, most of you guys are probably uh, know what a master plan is, and this is more than that. It's not a master plan. It's a tool that would help them going into the future knowing exactly what they need to do. And as things change, what the beauty of this tool is that Sean has full control of the tool. They don't have to depend on Underwood to do another study to, um, to then find out what's going on, what needs to be done. They have full control of it, and they could uh, adjust it as they go. So that's, that's, the, that's actually the beauty of this, of this tool. Um, also, um, <clears throat> we talked about, uh, they talked about the education piece. I'm extremely excited that they came in front of you guys to present this tool because we need to educate the public a little bit more. Uh, for too many, too many decades, the water industry has been out of sight, out of mind, and people just only know when there's something wrong going on. So um, I would like to congratulate them and what they're doing and um, ask for you guys to keep supporting um, this great effort that they, they, they embarked on. So um, that's all I want. Yeah, before you leave, I'm just going to ask, is, is now is, is this format of analysis something that will that, is that what's going to, Sean, you'll be applying to the sewer system that's, that's throughout the town? You've commented that that's coming. It seemed like a lot of this methodology applies to more than just water. It, it does, but we're trying to take one piece no, no, I understand. Time. I'm just, I'm, uh, this is forward looking. You're, yes. you're, you're talking 100 years here, so I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's the whole point was to start with the water system uh, a little bit simpler a lot less moving parts and then start bringing it into the sewer system and we've done a lot of this stuff already in the sewer system so if we move forward with it a lot of the stuff is already there yeah. you're 100 percent correct it doesn't only apply just to water and sewer it applies to um, uh, uh, storm water it could be done with public works it could be done in and different other formats, facilities. transportation all the way down. So it, it is a it is a template that can be used over and over. And over again. So that's that's a, another um, benefit of doing it. Plus, you took advantage of the free money. So <laughs> <laughs> always good. I I can't wait to see the finished product. 100, 100 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Cast. Uh, well. I can totally see that it's bringing together, you know, our own folks' knowledge of this particular system and everything involved and their, their background with it, plus your expertise. But I was just curious whether, are we like the first ones to use this kind of model or, it, you know, has it worked well elsewhere or was that already vetted when we brought, uh, brought them in? It's becoming more and more popular and definitely not the first one to do it, but um, mm -hmm. asset management in itself has been around or uh, since 1984, yep. um, and unfortunately has not caught on as quickly as other um, platforms have. Uh, but up to this day, we at New Hampshire at DES, we have established 48 communities that have gone through this process mm -hmm. of asset management. Um, I have to say, New Market was a little bit more advanced. Uh, they, do have somebody that's a little bit more forward thinking mm -hmm. um, so it made it a lot easier to go through the process um, and I could just see this is only the beginning for this uh, program um, I like to call it a program I don't like to call it a plan because a plan just sits up in a shelf a program you got to continuously be working on and it becomes part of your routine daily routine uh, tasks so there's still some more that you could do um, but it's a great start. Mm -hmm. I, I commend Phenomenal. 
And I just wanted to mention too, the, the fact that it's in a spreadsheet form and an arc map form makes it very adaptable. You know, if, if a product came out that you wanted to use later on, I mean, there are asset management softwares, mm -hmm. but that, that's a big investment. Um, so uh, this is a really good place to start. And then if you find, if your staff finds that, hey, there's a product out there that makes this easier and simpler and more efficient, um, then you can migrate what you have into that product. Yeah. And as you start bringing in the other <coughs> departments, that might be the way to go. Because you want to be breaking down all those silos that's been created by departments. So if the more you share information and keep it in one centralized location, the easier it becomes for all of you guys to make decisions with this tool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do I just pull this out? Yep. I know, Steve's the guru. That's it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, Sean, you're up back up again right for the MRI part of the year. <laughs> That's what it says on the agenda. I'm just following it. <laughs> Unless you want to just take a break and let... Uh <laughs> no, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the MRI report, uh, we had someone come in and, and look at our uh, department for the water and sewer department. Um, the three main things that um, came out of it was... Uh, to add one additional person at the wastewater treatment plant, um, to add an administrative help, and the third was to look at training as an ongoing necessary, uh, and also look at um, salaries because the baby boomers, uh, what we're finding in the um, water and wastewater field that is it's an older uh, workforce, and nobody's coming into that workforce, and we're finding that people are retiring and so what's happening is different um, places are trying to steal each other's help <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what's coming down I mean I know one I know one area um, sewer department that their average age is uh, 55 um, so it, that's becoming a huge problem we almost lost someone last year to uh, Portsmouth but we were able to retain them so one of the recommendations was to um, look at um, look at what we're paying every year, and what everybody else is paying, and how can we maintain our health to keep our to have the best staff possible. So if I start with the first one, add one additional employee. The difficulty on this piece uh, is that the MR report started halfway through a budget year, so it's hard to plan for that person. Um, however, there is enough money in the next budget to cover that employee, um, how that would happen is that it's because the wastewater treatment plant was planned to um, be completed under this budget year, which would require us a full loan payment next year in the next budget cycle. However, we're not going to, it was a major slowdown, and we're not going to uh, close on that loan until July or August which means we're only going to require a half a payment next year, which is a lot free some money up at the council, which so chooses to spend that money in that direction. Um, there, I was going to ask a question. So, because you were, you, because of the new plant was going to require an additional person or half person anyways, right? Is this beyond that? that we're this is beyond that. This is beyond that. Um, I'm not surprised about them saying that we need additional people. Uh, we have given tours to our facility for other places, other facilities to come in and look at what we have. And we go around and look at what other people have to try and, you know, optimize and figure out what's best to put in facilities for equipment. Um, and there's no surprise. Other, um, other um, towns have looked at our workforce and said, you're way understaffed. And I know we have been, but it's hard to add more staff when you're adding so much more infrastructure. Plus, with the, if you look at the water and sewer department, we're going through some major changes. We're adding, you know, a new wastewater treatment plant that's highly a lot more technical. We're adding, we just added a blending facility. We keep adding more infrastructure that needs maintenance and needs to be operated, but we haven't added any real staff. 
So, um, so there is money in the next year's budget for that. Um, on the administrative person, um, currently the administrative, we share the administrative with the DPW. Uh, we pay 20% of their um, salary. Um, it does say in here that DPW and the water and sewer need additional administration, administrative staff. Um, so to hire an administrative person, that would be 50% out of water and 50% out of sewer. The money again would come from out of the sewer from those loans that we don't need to pay right off the bat. On the water side, we got really lucky for the water main that went up the uh, that went up to the uh, water tower that we just replaced. We um, when we actually took that loan from DES uh, from the SRF program, we got 20% forgiveness. However, a couple months ago, we are now getting 40% forgiveness. So what does that mean in dollars? Um, it's, a, it's a little over a million dollar project. So instead of 200,000, we're getting $400,000 forgiveness. So it reduces the loan substantially, which frees up some money. You just made me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we are lucky. <laughs> yeah, we did. Nice, so, nice. So, nice. so well done, sir. If I may add to that, on the, on the flip side, if the percentage of the salary that the water and sewer is paying for an individual in public works goes away to pay for somebody working for water and sewer, we must make up the difference in the general fund for public works. Correct. Um, we're looking at that and we're looking at the duties of the individuals. Uh, one idea is to share the position with the f facilities director that's coming on board to provide clerical staff for that individual. Uh, first, I want to see what they need, uh, so we want to get them on board first. That was my my note here was what is the workload for each is there enough for a full-time person at DPA whatever I trust you working that I, out. yes and we, we were looking at the job descriptions I mean that's the hardest part of the transition of the water and sewer department right now because we're taking on so much new stuff we have to redefine and redo the job descriptions for everyone okay. to try and make sure that everything's covered within the system yep. um, so we are looking at that um, the last piece is uh, compensation, uh, evaluation for all our employees um, on a yearly basis and making sure that they get their certifications and training. Uh, we send our um, people to as much training as we can and when they come back from training they're required to present to the um, group on what they learn so we can hopefully expand that knowledge of people going on so they're not restricted to go from training. On the compensation side, uh, a couple of years ago, we did a, um, a wage survey, right. uh, which found that we were on the lower side. Um, we have in this next coming year budget, we budgeted to try and get people up to where they should be. Um, there are a couple people that if we they left, um, we're only paying them a, basically a quarter more than what the lowest rate is, and they've been here for 10, 15 years. Um, so we have to make some adjustments there, but the mm -hmm. budget is, has been, uh, has been uh, set for that, to make those changes. And uh, the town administrator and I are waiting for the new budget to sit down and really identify where they should be and put them where they should be. Any questions? Straight to the point. It's all about money and people, personnel. Mm -hmm. Council Thompson. <laughs> Actually, put my light on, <laughs> Um Again, thank you. I I think that um, as we had said at last meeting when we met with the police chief, um, the point of all of this MRI study to come in was not. Um, and Dale, you and I had some discussion about this. Was not to heavy hand it, not to criticize, not anything like that. Um, but the example I used with with the chair was that in my own business, you know, I need another educated pair of eyes, and so that's that's the thing to look at things because you are straight out. The chief is out. The other chief is out. Um, another pair of eyes, and I hope that you all found this helpful. Um, I think we found it educational. Um, we like the pluses and minuses in that discussion, um, but I, I, I also think kudos to you in that 
you've contained this where so much is under control that doesn't show up in this report either. So I think these are really fine-tuning things that point out where, where else we need to go on an, on an administrative level. As a group, we try and critically think and take a hard look at ourselves mm -hmm. every single year mm -hmm. to see how far we come, what worked, what didn't work, how we can move ahead. Mm -hmm. Not that, easy. Every year we try and do that. So it was very good. It was very good to have someone else come in and, and to see that, which was good. Yeah. And I think to bounce off, if there's yeah. things that that benchmarking, I use that in my own business. So I hope mm -hmm. I hope that that was appreciated. We, it We're was because we care. We're trying to run it like a business. Yeah. Yeah, That's you what do. We're trying to get to. Thank you. Uh, Council Bowden? Yeah. It is a business, so thank you very much for that. Um, do you have a timeline? If you haven't mentioned it, I may have been sleeping here, but sarcasm. Um, <laughs> as far as when you may be looking at hiring an admin or? That's kind of look at um, the wastewater operator. I'm just looking for approval to go ahead and hire somebody for the other position, the administrative person, we have to make sure that we have all our ducks in a row for uh, how that money is going to get held on the uh, covered for the, when I'm not paying for the DPAW okay. piece anymore. And how about uh, evaluating the, what you're paying? Uh, I'm going to wait to, the evaluation for what we're paying will come every July. That okay. We do do. Which we do. Yes. yes. Performance evaluations and salary evaluations come right. in July when you get fiscal year. So com comparing to other communities. Other communities. Oh. So that's when I will look to see yeah. to other communities. I think the biggest thing is that we didn't do it for so long, got us behind. But where we just right. did it, if I go around, you're not going to see as many changes as what we just saw. Right. We need to stay diligent and do this on a regular basis. And that's the scary part is that we are going to be losing people. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. I'm, 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 yes. I'm sure we will be. But, but and that's not not just your department, but we've heard this yes. from others as well. So. But I mean, I guess the biggest thing that we try and do down there is create a great work environment, mm -hmm. which is, means a lot. Yeah. And have them take ownership and what they do. So when you ask my water operator about what's going on, he'll tell you my wells are doing this and my wells are doing that, mm -hmm. which creates ownership. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. Which, Thank you. Which means he owns it, he takes it, and it means something to him. You know, I'm just yeah. not saying go out and do this. That's awesome. So you have a very good staff, probably one of the best staffs in the state right now. Well, to your staff. To, to you know, the last salary survey was actually conducted um, late 2015 was presented in March 9th of 2016. So it's about a year. Which was that recent? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was 14. Sean yeah. for Sean's group. Everybody. We did everybody. Town line. That wasn't. I have sort of. I think it might be the last question. We'll see. But um, I just was kind of curious on the. You know, there had been some conversation about another community that might be interested in. Uh, joining our sewer system at some point had heard that are, is there anything happening along are you trying to figure out your capacity at this point I hope I hope that's the that case. is part of the capacity study that you'll see come back uh, we still have conversations with one of the communities however you're not going to see one of the other community move until they actually get a new permit okay it's one of those things don't do nothing until they make it okay mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we'll get a few of those <laughs> <laughs> Straightforward, right there. <laughs> Theme yeah. of the night. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Good job. And uh, director of public works. Director of public works, Rick. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I don't want to sound like Sean, but it is difficult. It was great. It was great to have this happen. I think it was a good experience because it's something that's I've been here for 26 years and never been through this. But um, to do it mid-budget season, it's kind of difficult to to do it and all those things. But I think when it comes to the public work items and the fire ones, but in public works. Um, 
we, I think, already recognized as the town council, myself, and the town administrator, a lot of it's about the roads. We recognize we weren't taking care of our roads. Which we had the university update the plan. Mm -hmm. We increased the budget to take care of the roads. Um, as far as the mechanic, that was cut by the town council, a previous town council, uh, to reduce cost. But our current mechanic, we always did have a full time mechanic uh, retired. We've been making making that work. It, it works. It yeah, it's been saving money. Yeah, and we've outsourced so, it. Yeah, I mean it was a recommendation that, that the rep I had was just besides himself that I didn't have one with the amount of vehicles in the fleet that we have. But, hmm. um, yeah. So that that was in here. That wasn't something that I didn't put that bug in his ear. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> that, was, that was he was just because that's what he used to do. As far as uh, are you going to go through them one by one, Rick? I thought. Well, I think he sort really of is. Like he sort of is. I only have like two items in public works. It's all about the roads, okay. the mechanic, and then uh, as far as the facilities, we've hired the facilities guy. He's going to be starting in a few weeks. Um, and that was something you guys have been talking about for a couple of years, and it's finally happening. And then as far as the purchasing of groups, we in public works we belong to the uh, Lamprey Co-op. And we get a reduced fee with a bunch of communities for disposal of our trash and recyclables. So we, we do these things that's limited because all communities are different. But uh, we've been doing that for years, since probably 25 years at least with the co-op. We also use the NRA for uh, disposal of items from the transfer station where we get a group discount from several communities. Um, and then we take advantage of state pricing for many items such as tires, road salt, everything basically out there that we use, which is a great price. I mean, you can't touch those prices. They're pretty, pretty good. So we really kind of do that already with everything that we can. Um, but uh, there's more chances for me to do that on the fire side because there's a lot more items out there. And I'll get into that. Okay. But from public works, it's we where we can we do it and we've been doing it. So hmm. I mean I think that's really really it. We're we yeah. lean, we do what we can with what we can for staff. Um, he was he was a little surprised at that. He didn't get into that too much, but but we are very lean, I think, in a lot of departments, as you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so are you are you feeling I'm sorry, I, I, go ahead. I didn't have anything. Well, uh, Council Thompson, you, I see your light here. Well. Oh, um, mine are, I'm wondering if the, the last item there, so you can participate in collective purchasing groups, it says status completed, just a minor thing, but should that say in progress? Ongoing, yeah. Or yeah. ongoing or something like that rather than the completed, because I mean, I think we're going to continually do that. Yeah as you do my, my other question is Rick do you did this point anything out to you that you saw that you said geez I can we could do better than that we could do better with XYZ I mean other than these suggestions did you find um, the person from MRI to be helpful that maybe you kind of it clicked off a light bulb in your head about something else that you could be doing or I, I don't well, it's helpful, but the, the thing is, like, I've been in, in, I've been here for 26 years. You know, he comes in, he spends four hours with you one day, mm -hmm. and you know, he I know the community and our needs and things. I mean, he's going off of what he sees and what what I tell him. But um, yeah, there were some things, you know, but a lot of it's going to be budgetary things that I know aren't going to. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, I think other departments went through that too. But again, it was meant to be to be helpful. And as I said earlier, I find that helpful in my business to have an expert sometimes come in and just make sure that there's something that I haven't been staring at for a hundred years that that I don't even see anymore. I get so snow blind because I'm busy and I'm doing 17 million different things. So that's the spirit in which I'm kind of asking the question: Is did did you find it okay? The guy had some knowledge. What you know? Is there something that you've been some dust bunny in the corner that you've been looking at that yeah. you didn't know you were looking the at? The thing is, I think this facilities guy because yeah, it's there's a lot now in town. Yeah, and that's going to be real helpful. Okay, I'm only one person running 
two departments, as you know. So right. that's going to be real helpful for me. Good. Um, okay. It's something the town probably should have done a lot. Timing is everything. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Great. All right. We'll, we'll move over to the fire now. Fire. I'm sorry. Do you need to spin around and change a hat, Rick? <laughs> Put your old hat back on. Uh, Council Bob has a question. Quick, quick question. Do you think there's anything that the MRI missed? No, I think they were very thorough. He looked at he looked at all he looked at a lot. I know, and there were some follow-up questions when they say mm -hmm. he came and spent four hours with me. That's yeah, it's oh, not a lot of time. But. Uh, no, I, I don't. I mean, I don't think they left too many stones unturned. Really, I think they were Good. pretty thorough. There was a lot of people, and it wasn't just one person. Uh, Alan and the other gentlemen. Oh, okay, all right. You Steve. know, they, they came through, and, and I was surprised that actually, I, to be honest with you, I thought there were going to be more recommendations, and they were going to be like, you, you, you should be doing a lot more other things. And they were, as you know, they were pretty complimentary of myself mm -hmm. and my departments and mm -hmm. staff and stuff. And, Exactly. Yeah. So it was kind of nice, you know. Was yeah. Yes. Feeling. I mean, I feel like I do a good job. I try it's it's really hard. And absolutely. There's no things, but to have question. someone of that caliber come in, because a lot of times I know when they come in, it's not pretty for a lot of people. So I was pretty excited. Good. Oh, good job. So. Actually, one last question. I'll try to make it. Try to make it quick. I've been approached by a neighbor a few different times in regards to recycling and they're asking where does the recycling go yeah. so d and this may be a, a totally different question different animal for another time well, I can tell you where it goes right now uh, we don't get any of the funds Casella takes all the risk so when the market's bad sometimes they're paying to get rid of our recyclables which is happening right now yeah Right. Which a lot of times I think everybody thinks we make all this money off it. it that's not the case. It's it's all, it's very expensive to recycle, and I'm, I'm I know a lot of people like to hear this, but to me, it's fiscally irresponsible to recycle. Curbside, I, it's just it's it's a fact, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear that. But, but it's socially but responsible. But it's <laughs> but it, so, and there's but the balance. More the, more the question, and I maybe should have worded it differently was. Where does Casella? Where does is it actually recycled? Does it go yeah. in the same? Yeah, no, it's recycled. It's single stream now. Yeah, I can attend. There's um, a couple of facilities Casella runs in the state. One is in Bethlehem. Does it Salem? Charlestown. 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 They process the materials there. Um, depending on what the materials are, aluminum probably goes overseas. Um, paper, most they take the pulp, try to recycle and other paper goods uh, plastic same thing but a lot of it does go overseas and then comes back to right. us with other products yeah <laughs> kid toys <laughs> it's, it's really expensive to do mm -hmm. especially curbside mm -hmm. yeah probably about I'd say early 2000s late 90s there was a market I mean you a lot of communities would hold the recyclables themselves and almost operate as a commodities market that when the price of a certain say plastics were up you would sell it and then you'd hold on to the aluminum. So it's so saturated. But now, now it's, you just don't do yeah. it now. It's a losing, yeah. financially it is a losing proposition, but it does yeah, make yes. people feel good, but yeah. it is that Everybody balance that we struggle with. It, yeah, but it's, it's, like, it's a shame, but it, that's I, what I, it is. It yeah. <laughs> that was, thank you. That was <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to answer that one. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that, would, that could be a discussion we have at budget time. At some point, if there's, if there's a lot of pressure on the budget, you have to look at what. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one thing. Let me let me rephrase that. Well, you know what Rick's saying that it's it costs money to recycle now. However, if we didn't recycle, our tipping fees and the tonnage that we send to, to uh, Turnkey mm -hmm. would be would much be higher. It would be worse, and it wouldn't feel as exactly. good. Exactly. So yeah. it, it's not it's not that it's more expensive to recycle. It's just that it, it, the money would go somewhere else. It's not like it used to be. We'd make a profit. The, the companies would make a profit off of recycling. Yeah, yeah. I I, f I feel like it's a it's a pretty good system we have in town because it does make me conscious. I you know I I you just 
you know, because you pay by the bag to, to, to dispose of your trash, you're kind of aware you, you don't want to have more streaming stream going into your trash than you have to. You know, the recycling gives you a way to, to, to package stuff and send them out. You know, we, we started composting and we get a lot, we keep a lot of it going out of heavy stuff going from going into the trash and, and most of what it is is it digests down and you know mm -hmm. doesn't I get a little compost out of it but mostly it reduces our trash so I think we have a system that sort of encourages people to be to create less trash that way you hope so uh, I, I, I would be nice to be able to maintain it so uh, move on to fire I think seeing them on so, so for the fire department, it's, it's, it's a little, and I'm not sure how this all is going to happen, but anyway, there's like 25 recommendations, but like out of the 25, 21 of them, I currently have been doing it for some of them a long time. So we made them recommendations, but I'm not, I was already, we've already been doing it. So um, it's not something that hasn't been happening or ongoing per se. But I'll, I'll go through real quick one at a time, but like, uh, as far as like uh, maintaining personal recruitment and retention and training and things, we've been doing that for several years. It's getting tougher and tougher to get someone to work full-time somewhere, have a family, and as busy as this fire department is, do that too. Um, it just, we're busy. We're extremely, extremely busy. It's very difficult and challenging to do. We, we do what we can. We just did a big mailing. We picked up a lot of great applicants. Mm. And we're putting them through the process now. But uh, you can pick up six people and only two of them make it because once they get in and start doing it, you realize how busy it is. Mm -hmm. it's you know, what's the biggest part of the time demand that it's put on a new recruit that way? Is it the training? or? Well, it's training. I mean, it takes them takes them basically six months to a year to get through if they have nothing to get the training get off probation be able to run calls one of the one on one per se um, but then it's so busy you know you got to get up and go to work the next day it's like like today this it's been out of control today granted it was daytime but it'll, when it, that happens it'll do that all night time so you know every two hours you get not you go on a medical you're gone for two hours by the time you get back, get to, to bed, you know, it's tough to do. It's harder and harder to do. We're a bedroom community, everybody's gone. You know, we don't have a lot of businesses. Back in the day, we had the mills with hundreds of people working, you know, 30 of them on the fire department. Mm -hmm. There's no, we're the biggest employer in the town of Newark at the town. And, you know, these little tiny businesses in town, they, they don't have the staff and the manpower to let people come. And, I mean, we have people on during the day now at night time, but it's just, it's very busy. It's very busy. We're doing 1,100 calls. You know, we're almost up 100 calls every year, and a lot of it's medical, and those take a lot of time. It's very challenging to, to work full time, volunteer, basically volunteer. And we do pay our call members, and we're making some adjustments to help, help, help entice people to sign up more. But it's, it's getting busier and busier and busier. It's just, it's very, hard to do and work full time, have a family and all that stuff on top of it. As far as partnering with other communities, we do that. We are a member of what we call Seacoast Chiefs. There's 41 communities that are involved in that. We pay less than $2,000 a year to be a member of that. Um, what that gets us is a hazmat team, which is very, very expensive. We share the cost. That's a part of that fee we pay. Um, there's millions of dollars worth of equipment that they own that we all get to utilize. Uh, we do group purchases out of the 41 communities, and out of the 41 communities, that includes the shipyard, the Coast Guard, uh, Peace Air Force Base, and uh, National Guard. But we do group purchases of the whole, all those communities for all our hose testing, ladder testing, purchases, you name it. We do it all the time, and we, that's something we've been doing for a long time. Um, and it's 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 good because we get the group rate, and it's even better than sometimes the state bid, because 
we all put in at the same time. We're going to go buy gear. We all put in and buy our gear. So you're buying 500 sets of gear out of 41 communities, you know, because that includes the big ones like Portsmouth, the big cities. So, so we get some pretty good deals from being a part of that. Council Thompson, I just noticed your light. Well, that's that's okay. I can go back to it. It kind of ties into what you had already asked. Um, or what you were talking about, um, and something that, that Steve said earlier, uh, the staffing levels are tight. We're, we're busy, you need more staff, you're working on all of that. But the administrator said our ambulance receipts are, are down. So I was wondering if, if one or both of you can ad address. I can tell you that Comstock cleaned up the books. There was some stuff building up. Okay. You know, write-offs, stuff that wasn't getting collected. I know they cleaned up the books a little bit, so that's going to show us off. There was some write-offs there. I, I, I don't recall the numbers, but... But also, at, at nighttime, if an ambulance, if for some reason we're toned out and there's no response from a volunteer in Newmarket, we tone out to Exeter or to Durham to come cover. Correct. And in those situations, Exeter or Durham... Gets, gets the, the revenue. revenue. So anytime we see one that, that doesn't come out, we lose the revenue on that. So what percentage of the number you mentioned earlier would you say is because we are already toned out or we we just don't have enough staff to handle that? I mean, what percentage of, of that number is because it's going to other towns? I don't know if I'm asking yeah, that correctly. I'm looking into that right yeah. now. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the chief and I, I I discussed it. one of the things I'm asking for and what I'm going to do an analysis of is the uh, response time and how many calls are we getting I've asked the dispatch to provide me with a report of the calls for last year uh, when they were toned when they responded and who responded and did they have to retone because I, I really I'm interested to see okay is this a, a recent thing is it an ongoing thing is right it something that we need to, to plan for in the future so we're looking at that um, loss of revenue is is one thing, but I'm I'm right. also I'm very concerned. Right, I'm yeah. as concerned about the staffing as you guys are. Yeah. I don't, you know, we do have a better response time, and and there it is longer when an ambulance needs to come from another town. There's no question about we, it, and and did, that's what we, brought it to my attention actually. We did tweet some some pay stipends. Yeah, and it made a big difference. Okay. We typically, if you look at my monthly reports, mm -hmm. you see those charts, you'll mm -hmm. see aid given and received. You'll look typically one or two, maybe three are lost. Typically those are lost because an ambulance was out of service and there's dual calls. Right. Or the ambulance was in the shop for repairs. For which we've addressed with which, the... Yeah. Yep. So I hear you. that's one thing with that on average, but we were getting, getting up there like six or eight. It's just so busy. People are burned out. Yeah. So at one at one thirty in the morning on a yeah. very early Saturday morning. Those five o'clock calls get the same people just getting burned out. Okay. We did, adjust, we did do that adjustment just recently. Just recently, like a month and a half ago, maybe. Not even that. Not yeah. even. And it did. You know, if you look at my monthly report, you'll see that. Yeah. I think there was okay. one missed call. And, and to let you know as well that. Um, Chief True's policy is that if an ambulance is toned out, a police officer goes to the scene as well. So there, the police officer is there to even if it's, it's a and that was the case in the incident that I absolutely. that brought it to yep. my attention. That was the case. A police officer was right there. Yep. Absolute, absolutely, no, no so. problem there. But the puzzlement to me was where the heck yeah. was the the ambulance and why was it another town? Yeah, and that's so. why we're starting to. We, Hence my concern, not a criticism. It's a it's a concern. Staffing has been a concern. And like we said, it, it was a recent development the chief came to me we're trying to address it with a, yeah. what it is it's a, it's a weekend stipend that if you're on call it's a, it's a min, it's minimum, minimum wage that you're no that you're there for mm -hmm. so you have to be there then good I'm good yeah yeah good. And that's what we I do a stellar job it just yeah. okay awesome we keep you know when we see things we try and like I said we, we keep tweaking and what happened was we lost some real key players. It's a school, another full-time job, right. and 
sometimes you can only have, it can be just two or three people. Those people are like covering, and you don't realize it until they're gone. So okay. we made some adjustments, and, it, and it's working right now. Okay. It's working right now without having to say, I got to hire full time people. But we will definitely have to increase salaries, even for the call members, to sustain, which is a lot cheaper than hiring full time people. No argument for me, but then that goes to the ambulance revenue as well and seeing if we can stabilize my, that. My recommendation for this year is that's going to be an area of study. Yeah. Is the yeah. one, what are the number of calls we're getting? What are our response times? And then asking the rank and file, okay, basically doing a survey with them. You know, what do you see? What do you see? What's going on? And have it, you know, completely anonymous and then come back and figure out, okay, what do we do from there? It's going to be a process, but I think that's a. Yeah, again, without a, not it being a criticism yeah, thing, no. really just trying to help yeah, you out, because I, I, I know Rick's doing yeah. as much as he can. It's happening everywhere with volunteer force. Yeah, right, actually, exactly. It's funny because the, the other communities that are like they have in our situation, like, I don't want to name the communities, but similar to the market, not full time all the time. Stratum. They're, uh, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're like, how do you keep these people? Like, can we do, you know, we do what we can. Because we're fun. Because they, they're hurting. Like, they're hiring people, putting people on stipend, like, full-time, part-time per diem. And they, they just can't cover their calls at all. So it's, it's, it is challenging because everybody's working out of town, and everybody's got families now, and everybody's got so much going on. Yep, it's a different they, uh, and the, the training restrictions and requirements are so much more that you just don't have time to have a life, work full time, plus help out your local fire. And the culture is different. It used to be in a volunteer force, you know, your parents and grandparents were in the volunteer force, so you were in the volunteer force. I grew up in a town like that. I and don't know how many times I couldn't go to dinner because yeah. the tone went off and, you know, the light slaps on the top and everybody could pitch in. It was a different, it was just a different climate. Life was just different. And a lot of those in that who may have grown up in it are now making careers of it versus having it as a volunteer. Correct. So we lose that yep. aspect of it. Yep. But as far as some of these other recommendations, like the paramedic service and stuff, that's provided to us for free. My budget would increase drastically if I put on paramedics here. We get it, that service for free, and it, it's, it's just not fiscally responsible for us. To they, they get here quickly. We have them in Durham. We have them out of XRLS. They're toned with us. Boom, they're here. They get on scene sometimes as quick as we do if we don't have the full-time visiting station. So. That's just not something for us due to the cost and the level of calls for the paramedic service. Those drugs don't last forever. You gotta throw them out, buy all the so there's, there's, there's things that what we have works, works good for us and it, it helps with the budget process. The staffing as far as other communities have been trying to pick up in pursue other communities. McGregor has a private ambulance service. They have a lot of surrounding communities around us, so every time their contract's up, I go talk and we try to <laughs> suck somebody in. But it yeah. hasn't happened yet. It's a, <laughs> it's a political thing. They've had it yeah. for 50 years and no one wants to. Yeah. But, but we do pursue it. Um, we do look at it. And we do, uh, we do look at people's what they're doing for hours and staffing and response and it's they're volunteers too, so you gotta you gotta walk a line there because it's better to have them come up once in a while sometimes and not come at all. So it's a it's a it's a fine line I guess. It's it can be challenging but we do our best to keep everybody playing the same field. Doing the time. As far as working with local businesses, I kind of touched on that. There's, there's not a lot there. We apply for grants all the time. The grants are very competitive now, and they'll tell you flat out if you're not doing regional, like Seacoast Chiefs, when the 41 communities can put in for a grant, they'll get it. I put in for a grant as a town of New Market, they're not even going to look at it. So uh, we did just get a grant for the 
ballistic vest. So unfortunately, now we have to wear vests when we go on medical calls in some places. It's the nature of the reality of the world today. Okay, I saw that in your report. But, uh, but we, we did get that. But we do put in for grants as much as possible. But there's some grants, it's a lot of work to put in. And when I know, when the, when the guy that I know, my f good friend down in Newburyport is signing off on these because he's on that committee and he chairs it, is telling me I'm wasting my time. I'm not going to spend hours putting a grant in. And do you do most of the grant writing? Yeah, project? I have a grant. We have, fortunately, I don't know if anyone knows John Diesel. He lives in this community and he does that for a living. He used to be on our department. He had to get done. He works for Homeland Security now. But he has assisted and works with us from time to time to help us put in. And, and we broke his record for him because he had never been denied a grant until he did one for us. <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't too happy with that, but uh, he typically does the colleges and schools. He's kind of getting out of that now because he works for Homeland Security, but we do. We do apply, and, and they're very competitive. And if you're not doing regional, if it's not for 100 communities, you're not getting it. It's just there's no money out there. So. But we do do it. As far as uh, I am responding, we were one of the first communities to utilize that when it came out. There was like 30,000 people using it now. There's 300,000, but we, we utilize those things. I did pursue a living program. It is something that we really should consider trying to finish that upstairs so we could potentially, it's not just for living, but it, it might help with people being able to have a place to stay instead of waking the whole family up on this calls to get better coverage. Um, but the live-in program, when we tried to pursue that back in 06, I believe it was, it, it wasn't supported well by the community or the town council or the budget committee. But a lot of communities do utilize it. Um, I know, I think Farmington's looking into it now, too. And, and a lot of places do. It's more popular down south than up this way. But uh, it's something that, that we should consider definitely trying to get that other portion of the building so we can expand services per se but staffing levels with the fire department. Um, this is a question about that. Would that also, I don't know how it works exactly, so forgive my ignorance if this is a dumb question. Would you be able to then, um, can we get volunteers from other communities? Like if they yeah. had a place to stay here? Well, we've expanded that now. Okay. We actually, well, we used to not accept anyone unless they were within the responses of our, you know, if you live just well, over yeah. the town line. Yeah. Well, we have people now from Exeter Law Department, uh -huh. and they come and they just, they have to hang out here because they can't respond from that far away. But uh, that help the biggest thing with that? the living program is like, there's a lot of students that come up here and they go to school and they're fully certified. Yeah. And they're right next door, but they, they can't can. respond on medical from there. So we can utilize them, and we do get them still, but we don't get to utilize them like we could if we had a 100% completed facility yet. We're lacking locker rooms and showers and bunk rooms and yeah. those types of spaces that we just, because we didn't have full-time people when we built it, we, we cut that to save money building the building. Um, but we could utilize those people, and they could stay here instead of in a dorm. And we don't pay them. Can John, just, write a, didn't have can John write a grant for that? <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I tried. And I wish there was something for facilities. And maybe the new guy will know but money out there for it, but I, I don't know. How much is the estimate of building that? It was like 275 and it goes up like 3% a year or something like that. So Because it's a, it's a, I mean, you're basically building two bunk rooms, two little sets of locker rooms. Such showers. The the trouble with that space is it's it's a big open space right now, so it's like just a big mezzanine. So to go in, you have to bring the sprinkler system has to be altered. And to go in and just piecemeal, it's not going to be any cheaper. The HVAC covers just a big open space. It's not set up designed for individual spaces. So you kind of got to go in and do it. It's going to be. Cost, more cost effective to go in and build it and be done with it and uh, try to piecemeal it. Because you can't just do little sections at a time. Well, you can, but it's it's a, it's, it's going to be costly. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I looked into working with the school with this, uh, this recommendation that they had come up with as far as an EMT basic program. And it's really challenging. These classes are all basically at night and weekends. And we typically don't take a student. We let we ask them to try to at least graduate from high school and then you know if they're going to school or college or something, we'll try it. But it's it's a big commitment and it's a lot of work and you know they need to I feel they need to at least get through high school and graduate before they tackle this. Um, we're looking at, at trying to work something up with the school and I'm working with the superintendent on that. Maybe not so much an explorer post, but to have someone stop taking EMT and fire one, fire two, and all those things, and try to go to high school. So that's that's a that's a big deal. So that might be a little challenging, but it's it is it is something we've looked at and tried to address. And we we are looking at it. As far as a successor for me, I mean we're very fortunate that you know what I mean that you you would have to have a full time fire chief here about what's doing. Yeah. Because that's just, my mind. There's no if I wasn't in the same building and being able to do what I do, it just, it's, that's what it is what it is. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm pretty cocky. Yeah. That that one, yeah. <laughs> like I said, we partner with the other communities through Seacoast Chiefs all the time. I've been a member of that, I've got all the monthly meetings, New Hampshire Chiefs, everything. So we have a pretty pretty good deal with that organization. It's like less than two thousand dollars a year our dues to be a part of that. And that covers the hazmat team, which is huge. One of those suits is five thousand dollars. And they don't last forever. You gotta throw them up and buy new ones. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I think it's worth saying because I mean I think in a way I feel like good about the discussion we're having now because you know, four and a half years ago when I first joined the council, there was a lot of uh, discussion and really a yearning for regionalization among members of the council without a really good way to sort of understand what kind of mutual aid, things that are really a sort of lower level regionalization that are already ongoing. And I think it's, it's hard to go to a higher level of regionalization unless there was some kind of uh, leadership from the state on that. So I think it's, it's probably, I, I feel good about the, this MRI report because it helps us understand better as a council what good things are already happening in terms of efforts to, to be efficient through efforts like the Seacoast Fire Chiefs. Because some of the other stuff is just not, it's, it, you, I appreciate it and I want to encourage everybody to look for ways to regionalize. But I think it's hard to do it. You know. Geographically for us too, with some of the smaller communities next door, it just, it's, it was looked at at one point, us who feels, and I think Strata, mm -hmm. probably 10 or 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, we're not, you know, if we were right next to Dover and Portsmouth maybe, that would be more realistic. Um, but but for us, if we were to regionalize, we would be the center. I was yeah. going to say, oh, the us pulling into fields, but we can't. Yeah. We can't make busy. them do it. Right. We're way too busy. To. Mm -hmm. and, you know, in fire, in most public safety, the culture in New England has been for centuries. Every community on their own. Every community has their own police. Every community has their own fire. If you leave in, in New England, it's anomaly that you you mean you have when I go to the city manager's conference, in this country, like you have your own fire department. I'm like, yeah, and you have your own police department. You're down yeah. south, it's all by country. It's county. Or by county. I mean. Right, and in New England, counties just Very take care of prisoners and rest homes. That's pretty much all they do, and they do. I mean, there's a sheriff's department. Serve your warrants. Right, but it's not, we have to do the day-to-day -day patrols. Yeah. No. Um, and state police are so out into the more rural and wooded areas that they can't do the patrols here. So it's just, it's in also where we are in New Hampshire. I mean, we're in the population center. We're not in the northern part. Um, that, you know, Portsmouth, 
they would probably try to, if you were in, like the chief said, we're right next to them, they could take us over, probably, but we're not, and that's the difficulty. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing, too, that's interesting about the club, people realize is a lot of those departments that are 24-7 full-time did that when they hit the coal mm -hmm. <coughs> We only have two full-time staff people. I mean, I guess you can count potentially part of that. But we are doing about one hundred calls. That's that's busy. Maybe the other towns just have don't have the right people and they have too many because look what three of you can yeah. do. It, no, I know, but you did your own grade by and did it. We have a lot of volunteers. We haven't we do. seen it we haven't had any mass exoduses. People, you know, resigning. We've had changes in their lives where they got married and have little six month olds and things like that, which yeah. does affect. Sure. You know, sure. Like but again, the culture of being a volunteer, firefighter, ambulance driver is just changing. It's a dying, it is. Yeah. It's a dying thing, and everybody's trying to figure it out. And the, the answer, unfortunately, mm -hmm. is having more full time people, really, because there's no. I love that the people we have aren't afraid of hard work. Yeah, you know, it's not it, it's not an easy thing. But I love people that don't really mind working. Mm -hmm. We just picked up some really nice This one thing they recommended, this billing for emergency responses, that's that's something that no one in our entire CEQOS chiefs has done. Dover looked at doing it, and they were like crucified for even thinking of sending someone a bill that got in a car accident for a fire department fee. And that's what that Whoa. basically is. So if, if you got in a car accident, we show up. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, I know a lot of people don't, your insurance policy covers that. You're paying for that. In your policy today, your rates are not going to go up. The cost of having an accident. You know what I mean? They're not going to go up. Absolutely. You, they just don't tell you about it. Absolutely. So it's something I'm looking at and trying to, but nobody wants that they're all like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> keep like keep pushing that. The doctor doesn't not bill you because he feels bad because you were in an yeah, accident. I, I remember the debate, and the debate was, well, we don't want to have people not calling because they're going to get a bill. Well, you don't. Well, they're, then they're going to bleed out on right. the road. Yeah, I don't know. That's up to you. He'll say I'll pay anything. The only thing I say to that is I know this, you know Perry. Yeah. When he proposed that, a lot of people got upset, and he was asked to do that by it's the city council. council. And then they were like, what are you doing? Like, they, they kind of threw him out to the wolves almost. <laughs> Bringing that forward, <laughs> well, then the get up but there and support them this true, time. You there's know, there's not a lot. There's motor vehicle accidents, and not a lot of homeowner policies. Well, like if we came to your house because you had a chimney fire, they don't really cover that. I'm finding that it's it's a gray area. So I'm trying to get some more information. Nobody, it's like nobody wants to show their cards with this. It's a little challenging. I will say they're all like, oh, what are you talking about? Like they all call it something different. It's mm -hmm. like I feel like I'm chasing my tail a little bit, but. Not that I have a tail, but, but if somebody gets <laughs> lost, but if somebody gets lost in the woods or the mountains, I mean, we're hearing now that they they're billing for so search. search so, so we're looking into it. But I will tell you this: it's, there's <clears> not <throat> many communities in the state of New Hampshire that have implemented this one. Like Dover, Dover Dover's doing it. Mm -hmm. Dover's doing it. Mm -hmm. Dover's doing it. 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 It's, it's just challenging, I will say. So it's work in progress. Yeah. Keep on. Okay. I don't know if there's any other questions. We, we have a false alarm thing. We've had that for years. But you got to go three times. We'll send you that. But the false alarms aren't like they used to be. The systems now are so updated. You don't have a heavy truck yeah. setting them off like you, know you used to. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't happen. Fire ones we don't get. They're we very get security ones are the ones that we see. That's the one that Chief Drew is going to be addressing on his end. Right. Um, so what is the, um, with, what, wasn't this, I'm trying to remember what the conversation was about the uh, 
collection rates. Are you happy with the collector? We're, we're, we're actually looking at that. There's a lot of, we use Comstar, and there's a lot of people not happy with Comstar. It's being looked at, and I'm on a committee with the Seacoast Chiefs, like us, Hampton, Salisbury just jumped ship. I'm sorry, Seabrook. But we're looking at maybe going up the bid as a group and getting somebody else. So that's kind of like a... But we Have you do, been we, happy with them? What's that? Have you been happy with them? Have uh, we been happy with them? For As the most part, you really got to stay on top of them. Um, I, I, I don't want to say they're getting lazy, but... It's, it's, they, from my looking at it, they've been getting complacent because they're the, one of, they're the big player in town. So they're not... People talk about the one school bus company kind of phenomenon yeah. where it's a... Okay. Yeah. So I think it, it's, it's, I've heard this discussion in other communities as well. Yeah, we're, oh. They know everybody's stopping them, so Maybe that's, that's up. working for us. <laughs> okay. Rick, I think this is, I think you've gone behind the, through most of the items here. I had a couple of questions. I don't see anybody else here, but two questions I wanted to touch on that maybe are beyond what's on this. One would be, uh, I think we asked just about everybody, is there something that you think would make th you more efficient or more effective that, that MRI didn't address with this report that, you know, this would be a good time to mention to us to be aware of? If I had more people, obviously I'm going to try to do what I can with what I have for staff and call people before I come in and say I need to add full time. Definitely, it's it's getting very very challenging to to cover the calls, the call line, the staff, and the call departments that we have, with all the other requirements that's required of them, from training to duty hours to the call volume itself. Obviously, if I have some more people, we're trying not to go there. We're trying to work with what we have. We hear you. Yeah. It's it's really budget restraints, you know. Obviously, the perfect world. Just had a lot going on lately, it's just, and it's had it's to be. I mean, unfortunately, there's. But I I am pleased to say that we are we stay in the flow of what we currently have. You know, we really are. We just made that little adjustment, and it seems to have worked. I'm curious to see if it's still working six months down the road. has made a big difference. And, and just can you give me a, this, the other thing I was going to ask, just in terms of where we are on fire equipment, what? what fire equipment. We yeah. currently, the CIP is a little off for the replacement. Engine one would be up, I think, in 19. We bought the packs and we did those purchase. We just need to update, really, we have one engine in our boat, which doesn't need kind of the boat we currently have should not be used for fire department type rescues. Uh, that's something I put in the CIP if you recall, but I think there's something right there to address that so it's not an issue. The boat? Yeah, the boat we currently yeah. have is not set up for rescues and the applications we use. It's actually somebody's gonna get hurt. Uh, we got it for free. But Good fishing boat. But it's it's like I think it's like an eighteen thousand dollar purchase. And there's money in the CIP. It's something we'll wait until July to look at. But we really, as far as equipment, it's just the uh, we have one engine coming up in the next couple of years that we're going to be looking to replace in that boat. Besides from that, our equipment's in good shape. For beyond the next couple of years, how? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. For yep. for the foreseeable. Yep. Oh, uh, Council Cast. Um, I'm just trying to come think of coming at it from another angle, which is, are there types of calls which, where we, where maybe they could be reduced uh, because through education of the public uh, as to when to call, when it's appropriate to call, just to help them understand, you know, just to offset that. No, I don't think that that's... It's not happening. Not something that, yeah. Okay. I don't think that's a good idea. Hey. So I don't want to 
say the public shouldn't call. No. But I just meant, are they aware of the right time to use this service? It, it, it's not right It's not so much of a, of a, like a category. Okay. It's more of an individual dispatch, or individual basis. Dispatch will screen that in. Yeah. They, okay. There's other ways to get at it. Well, they, yeah. they have frequent Good question. customers. That may mm -hmm. be using not using it for the right reasons. So sometimes we are just a taxi. Sometimes we, perhaps we might have a free to patrol to car or something. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we, but, but some people will I'll just leave it at that. There's probably other people that never will call when they should have. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. There are people, people drive people themselves or over <laughs> there with just pants. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for yep. understanding my question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we understand, yeah. <laughs> okay. I see no other lights, but, um, you know, you're right, Rick. The MRI the report, town-wide, and you in particular, and or you in, among them, was very complimentary of the level of efficiency, mm -hmm. the uh, level of dedication of the employees in this town. And I think that was a... Uh, that was a good result of our of doing this this exercise. Yeah, it, I agree. It's good for the. It was, it was fun too. It was great. But, uh, my fire guy was great. He was great. I, I mean, I know him, but he. Uh, well, I didn't know him, but I had met him before through yeah. the chief. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's well respected. Yes. Right. I, I think that was one of the things too that they they didn't put they put people in each of the profet in the department. That worked in one of those departments. So they, yeah, they didn't it. send me. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? No, I, right. You know. Oh, like I, man. even with me, they sent a, a, <laughs> an account manager to speak to me. I, so it's not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. And along that line, too, I think that this, this kind of the report itself, this kind of document, uh, you know, will, will help as we go through the succeeding generation of town councilors and the town council changes over, I think there's some, some, this will provide something that will help the council kind of get up to speed on where we are with the town so we can sort of advance year by year instead of kind of cycling through the same discussion topics when they really, in some cases, have been covered. That doesn't mean things might not change, something that we think we've settled one way now, somebody might look at it again, but it's nice to have records and sort of it'll help the institutional memory of the town council and the town I think moving forward so and, and on the department head side is it get, keeps it on it's on their burner front burner as well because if you notice in most of the monthly reports that they re mention something or mm -hmm. and I also see when they mm -hmm. edit the if they edit or looked at the mm -hmm. spreadsheet and they do so it's not it's not a dead document which is you know sometimes two few months in from any study some it goes a little stagnant and it hasn't been well, it does make it easier for us. We're a part-time council, and, and the chairman is, and you guys have heard me say, I don't want to micromanage. I don't want to, I can't do this full-time. I've got another job, too. So, I mean, it just, I think the whole communication thing and everybody being on the page um, has improved tremendously, and ideally that will make it easier for the new councillors to come up to speed and get some of the background information, because we go through that every year. It's like, oh, I talked about this already. And it, it's, it's hard because of just because of the nature of what happens up here. So. Well, it's a nice background for us, too, for budget, too. Absolutely. We'll go through this process with each of the departments before we get to budget. So I, I think that will kind of help we us. We zipped right through it more. last year because of a lot of this, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. But it's funny, too, because, you know, a lot of the things I think everyone recognized, too, like the role plan, there was things already in work in progress that recommendations. I don't think it was just because they knew we were working on it or knew that, you know, I think Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I shared with you that. For, I mean, you mentioned the road plan, that Dr. Goodspeed came in and he was pretty surprised how, one, accurate he was and how we, you know, we said, no, that's, the price was correct. We did exactly that and we budgeted the same out for next year. And mm -hmm. so he was, it's, a, it's an accurate report. So it's not like these are pie in the sky either so, so thank you Rick thanks, thanks. thank Rick. you so much so uh, I see nothing here so next is committee reports anybody have a committee report I do um, the conservation committee met uh, last on the 11th so last last Thursday uh, we started off by doing a uh, 
we did a site walk of Shonda Park. Um, there's some concerns about some erosion that's going on around the uh, the sea walls, the retaining walls. So we kind of uh, surveyed that uh, to get a feel. And there's uh, clearly some, uh, some visible damage and some visible flaws that need to be addressed. So that's moving forward. That's kind of on the agenda to look into possible ways to repair that or, or stabilize uh, some of those areas down there. Um, after we, we had a chat about uh, some recent developments with the Boulder Brook subdivision and some concerns about a buffer zone being uh, encroached upon, which I guess is a broader issue uh, with some other sites as well. Um, continuing progress with, with Schottmeyer Park. Uh, so things are moving along with parking lot plans and uh, signage and things like that and getting things mapped out. Um, and that was kind of, those were kind of the key things that we focused on during that last Thursday. Anybody else have a committee meeting? I have a couple. Uh, I mentioned already that May 5th uh, we had that last meeting of the, uh, not a committee of the town, but that groundwater uh, technical committee. And I thought that was uh, an interesting process and also a good example of one of the things that I think is beneficial to New Market is that by being close to uh, University of New Hampshire, uh, that we, we have studies, in this case it was a study looking at uh, bedrock wells, which are hard to model, mm -hmm. but it, it sort of does alert us to things that, um, you know, as, as Sean is doing a good job of planning, some of the challenges that uh, could be brought on by rising sea level, all of those things could affect us and they, uh, you know, there are, there are a number of agencies that work on these types of issues and so it's a, it's a little bit of challenging to figure out who all the agencies are and what they're all doing and how you coordinate it. But there is some, uh, the, the report that came out of that was, was really uh, uh, interesting, some of the maps and stuff that, that came from that. Um, so, um, and then, um, uh, the dam committee is meeting next week okay. to review, start to review the engineering proposals that have come in for the next step on that, and uh, so that's that's in process. I'll mention as well that the um, um, I, I don't know if anybody else was able to stop by, but the uh, it is it is kind of fun when they have the uh, the uh, fish and game department has their day at the fish ladder. The herring, the herring run, and that was last Saturday. Oh, so uh, I didn't know about it. Was it was it in your report? Or no, well, I guess it comes up. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to send one of those in there because yeah. there's a pretty good crowd that shows up. But that's uh, that's through the okay, you know. Because, with, I mean, I might have been working anyway, but I didn't even know. I didn't know, but yeah, that. Yeah, would be. well, and I'm, I'm glad I'm mentioning it because they they tend to have one of those each year, and the the, uh, the lamprey is the lar largest herring run on the uh on, of the rivers that go into great bay uh we have a a good and healthy herring run you know and it's uh, always important it's always important it it shows <laughs> that the you know some of the things that will be considered when the uh when the dam is re-engineered for the abutment walls as we're discussing you know you have to preserve access to the fish ladder uh lamprey river advisory committee I, they, you know they're they're uh sort of representative was there and and you know she's very interested in once those abutment walls start to change there'll be the opportunity maybe for another little teeny pocket space up there next to the fishway so there are things that can that will start to come to come out of it once once we've um, address, start to address the dam in that fashion they can huh. continue to really improve our downtown area because that we, that that's some you can it all kind of fits together I want to see the fish I go think. up a ladder absolutely that would be really cool. And um, I'll just mention, too, the last thing I'm going to mention, the uh, town administrator mentioned uh, that has a prospective date now for the uh, school board and town council to have a uh, prospective meeting on uh, August 30th. And I would just, you know, I mentioned the, the, uh, uh, the joint subcommittee that between the school board and town council. And I, I, the way I framed that last time of whether that subcommittee would continue, but that's really, I kind of had that wrong from the other, uh, from the school board, and they discussed it last time. But it would be, uh, would be, um, I think, useful to have the subcommittee to meet one last time as a wrap-up. That could be part of what gets presented 
when we have the uh, joint meeting coming up. And then the, um, I think primarily then the, the uh, town administrator or superintendent will be working on the agenda with some Agreed. feedback from the chairs for our, uh, for our next meeting. And the, the subcommittee will have done its work after that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think the progress on the on shared services between school and town has, uh, has had a good start. So I'm optimistic that will continue. So that's kind of where we are on the, on the process of leading up to that. So I don't know if any questions about that process or any comments. Seeing that, I, you know, unless the, does it's anybody have a question that popped up and then it went right out of the Okay. Well, I, mean, no, we the, I don't know. Does anybody have a closing uh, comment uh, or correspondence in the business, anything like that? Mm. Anything, anybody else have anything you want to say? Council Finch. For closing comments? Yes. Uh, just a reminder that the uh, annual fishing derby is scheduled to take place on Saturday, June 17th from 7 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, and they're planning to stock it with about four to 500 fish. So just a reminder about that. Always a good time. Anything else? I think then... Uh, oh! Uh, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> what it is. Um, just a bit of procedure um, and I may have missed it but did you mention where the uh, other two counselors are tonight oh. or that oh, I wish I, you, just thank you. is that called a point of yeah order? You, yeah point of order you have okay. to say they're excused okay they are excused counselor uh, Burns and counselor Weinstein are excused this evening I should have mentioned that at the beginning so thank okay. you okay thank you That's what I, was and I think with that I think we're adjourned okay. seeing no other business thank okay. you thank you Approved, improved, motion second, we're adjourned. Yeah. <laughs> I've been told we don't need to.